If I wanted to create a Turnitin.com assignment using the Turnitin external tool within Canvas, students will never need to go to Turnitin.com. And as a teacher, you most likely would not have to go to Turnitin.com. What you're going to do first is just title your assignment and write any instructions that you might have for your students. So as you can see here, I have instructions for my students. It's for a lab report. I wouldn't necessarily say turn it in to students on this um, document in the instructions because I don't want students to get confused and log in to turnitin.com and submit their work there. They can do that, and when that happens, you will not see their assignment in Canvas. So I don't even tell them that it's a Turnitin assignment. I just say make a copy of the document, conduct your lab, and complete your lab report, submit it here in Canvas. Sometimes I'll even put in the instructions a warning saying do not go to Turnitin.com. If you submit it directly at Turnitin.com, you will receive a zero because the teacher cannot find your assignment in Canvas or something along those lines. But what I'm going to show you real quick is just a trick. I have a template that I want to give to my students for their lab report, and this is it. The first step is to share the assignment so anyone on the internet can view with this link. I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to go back to Canvas, click on the hyperlink to link to a URL. I'm going to paste the link, but I want to force a copy so the student doesn't have to go to file, make a copy. When they click on this link, it's going to force them to make a copy. So I'm going to go to the last forward slash, and I'm going to delete everything after that last forward slash, so starting with edit to the end. And I'm going to replace that with copy. So now when students click on this link, it's going to force them to make a copy of the doc. I am then going to choose what type of assignment I want. Generally, I'm going to use an external tool. But I want to use the Canvas rubric for SpeedGrader so that I can grade this in Canvas. If you have a tablet device like an iPad and an Apple Pencil, what's really nice is when you grade it in Canvas, you can annotate and write all over the document and then you still have access to the rubric on the iPad because the rubric is in Canvas SpeedGrader. So you would be grading this from the Canvas Teacher app. So I always like to add a SpeedGrader rubric. And you cannot do that once you've added an external tool. So I'm going to leave it as, let's say, no submission for right now. I do need to give a due date. And I'm going to press Save. I'm not going to make it public or publish it for my students just yet. Once I press save, you'll notice that down at the bottom of the assignment has plus rubric. This is how I can add a rubric to my Canvas assignment that I can access in SpeedGrader. So I'm not going to use the Turnitin rubrics at all. I'm going to click plus rubric, and I actually have one for this lab report from a few years ago, I believe, which is the CO2 meter lab, and so I'm just going to reuse that. If you don't have one already made, you can create your own. And I'm going to do use this rubric and I can double check and make any changes or edits if I need to. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to click on the pencil and I want to make sure that this counts for grading. So I am going to use this rubric for assignment grading. So I'm not using this as standard space grading. I'm just using it as regular grading. So I want to make sure I have this checked. I'm going to click update rubric. And right now it says that the assignments do not, the scores do not match because my rubric is worth 40 points and I only made this 10 points. So I am going to change it. And what it's going to do is it changed the overall points my assignment because when I went in, I only had it as 10. When I add the integration, kids can't view this rubric. So what I like to do is take a screenshot of the rubric. So I'm going to minimize the screen a little bit, and I'm going to use my screencasting tool. I'm going to click Capture, and I'm going to capture this image. And you can see it here. I'm using Snagit, which is a tool that I like, but there are free screen capturing tools in Macs, PCs, Chromebooks, etc. And I'm just going to save this image 
to my computer. And now I'm going to go in to edit the assignment. I'm going to reset my um, window so it's full size again. And I want to put the image of the rubric right here. So I'm going to click on Embed Image. And I'm going to choose Canvas. It's going to go into this course. So now I have the option to upload a file. I'm going to click on my file and open it. And press update. So now the rubric is here so my students can see it once I make the change to my assignment. Because once I change it to an external tool, the rubric that they normally see if you add a rubric is not viewable to them. So that's why I added that picture. So external tool. This is where we're adding the turnitin.com. I'm going to click find. I'm going to scroll down to turn it in. And press select. Now I am going to save it one more time. I'm still not going to publish it for my students because I might want to make some changes to the turnitin.com settings. So this is what the assignment looks like for my students. They can um, see the instructions that I wrote for them. They could see the rubric. But then down here at the bottom, this is in the teacher view, I can now see the settings that I have for Turnitin, which I might want to change. I'm not going to write any instructions in here. The due date should be the due date that came from Canvas. You may want to change the feedback release date because you are not going to release the feedback immediately. Um, to students if you do have them go to turnitin.com. But since I chose to use the Canvas Speed Grader rubric, I am not even going to have students go to turnitin.com, so this doesn't matter. They're going to see the results when they go into the grades within Canvas. So I'm going to click on Optional Settings and scroll down. And here is where you can choose whether or not you want to allow late submissions. I recommend having this box checked. If you have this box unchecked, a student cannot turn in the assignment late in Canvas, even if you don't have an end date on the assignment. A student can't resubmit the assignment if you need them to, because if they made some sort of error. So I always recommend having this checked to allow late submissions. You can choose whether to allow grammar checking. You can choose a bunch of different features. Um, I like to have it compared against student paper repository just because I have many times caught students using re lab reports or projects from prior years from older siblings. Now, in the similarity report, again, choose what you would like. I like to have students be able to view the similarity reports because if they see that there's a high match, they might want to fix it and resubmit it before the due date. So I give students that option. And then you can choose whether you want to save these settings for future use so you don't have to go back and do this. And then you're going to press submit. When a student submits the work, you will see it down at the bottom of your screen. You'll see when the student uploaded the work. Um, you will see whether or not it has been viewed, um, if, student, if the student went back to look at it. This is where you can use a grade mark if you are grading within Turnitin.com. But again, I don't recommend that. The similarity, this is where I could see the similarity report and it shows an 8% match for this particular student. If I click on it, I can open it up and look at the specifics of the similarity report through Turnitin. I don't have to sign in to Turnitin. It will just show that to me here. But if I want to grade this, I recommend using SpeedGrader. And in SpeedGrader, you have all of the annotation tools along the top edge of your screen where you can free draw annotations and write notes for students. You also have access to the rubric. If I click view rubric over here on the right, I can click through and assign points to the student. 
and I can leave specific feedback for each of the different rubric rows or criteria and then press save. And on this here for the students, after I am done with this, I want to make sure that I click the check mark to save this particular thing, this particular annotation. You can see it has a dashed line around it. It has a place for me to leave typed comments if I want. But um, you want to make sure that you click on that so that it stays. Because if I just start to do this and I don't click on the, um, the comment part or the check mark, it won't save. So now it has saved it. It's here to stay on the screen because I've clicked around on that for the student. So if I go to the next student, which I don't have a next student, and come back, you will see that the annotation is still there. And the students will be able to view that when they go into the assignment and view the feedback.